I don't even know why I'm doing a, 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 an introduction because it's Bob Klauser, but I'm telling you, <laughs> I have a, um, I was looking through, uh, like I mentioned before, I was looking through a lot of the old videos and, and clips of Bob and photos and I'm looking there and you know, Bob, when you look at Bob, I use this joke before, he really does look like an industry professional, even though you don't know, he knows what he's doing when you're looking at him, going out on these things and casting. When I go out there again, it looks like I took a wrong turn from a fly shop and I still have the tags on. It's um, <laughs> unbelievable the amount of work that he has done um, with, he's got two books. Everybody knows about the Clouser Deep Minnow that's probably caught more fish and more fish species than almost any other fly. He's, uh, he's affiliated with Rainies. He's affiliated with Renzetti. And there was even um, a, a Clouser arm that you attached to the Renzetti vice. Is that correct, Bob? Yes. Yes. Sure. I just found that out and I, I had an epiphany a moment when that was there. <laughs> it was just unbelievable. <laughs> I was... Uh, I think it was a private moment. Uh, David, you're going to have to edit that comment out. But it was just unbelievable. I saw this arm, he put it on there, and we loaded a fly in, and we were testing it out, and it was just unbelievable. And is Jackie with you, Bob? Yeah, she's sitting over here. You want her to explain it to you again? No, no, no. We'll leave that for the remedial session where you can go through it slowly. <laughs> but she could pop on any time she wants also. We promote women in fly fishing and Jackie was there and she said she uses it to do tying. So that's absolutely fantastic. If you don't know who Jackie is, sorry, Jackie is, is she a, an assistant? What, what do you call her? The head of your IT department? She, she is my boss. I am not. Oh, <laughs> I have one of those. It's called a wife, but anyway. Um, oh, well, this this lady's not my wife, but she's close to it. But she, I, I know. I was talking she, to her on the phone, and I, I think she's going to have to give me upskilling on internet because yeah, she does she, the whole site, she, and it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, she kind of runs my whole business, and which is good because when you're 82 years old, all your mind thinks about is eating, sleeping, and maybe getting up and going fishing. Uh, that's, that is actually a Clouser minnow. Okay, I'm going to show you how I put it together tonight, but before I do, I want to show you a couple of sizes that you can make out of this. There's two sizes, like a, a one aught and a, a little number of four, right, freshwater hook, saltwater hook. This is one of our favorite trout flies. This is a Clouser minnow on a size 10 hook, and it's made from the fibers of calf tail. And if you guys are making size 8s and 10s, uh, just put your deer, deer hair tail away and get your calf tail out. And make your small flies out of the guard hairs of the calf tail in pieces. Now, if you're wondering about hooks, I'm going to I'm going to use a size two here tonight, right there, and it's called and, it, and it's an Airx. I also got some good news from Airx that uh, within the next year or two years, there's going to be a whole series of Clouser minnow hooks made by Airx company, super sharp. Uh, won't rust and two two sizes one for fresh water uh, thickness and and one for salt water thickness that's so them big fish you guys catch don't bend them out uh, as far as eyes are concerned I'm gonna probably put this in my scissors so you can see them see the eye in the scissor tips those are made by Wapsie Fly Company, and these are their perfection eyes. Now, the perfection eye is the one we use the most because it self-centers itself on the hook shank. Doesn't end up with one side being longer than the other. Uh, centers itself up right on the hook shank. Uh, 
doesn't take much thread to pinch it down. I want to show you how this clouser arm works here. Uh, adjust the hook, uh, the size of the hook. The first thing I'm going to do, can you see the thread? And where I'm putting it? And the bump of thread I'm going to put on here? Well, it's, it's, it's actually a 6 aught tying thread, so it's pretty thin. And it's a uni thread. I'm going to lay these eyes across the hook shank like that and come from the rear of the eye forward one, two, three, four turns. And it stays on, my, it's on my side of the, of the uh, shaft right now. I'm going to push it over, and these are called cross wraps, not figure eights. Uh, figure eight wrap is not really uh, good to hold anything down on because when you make one one side come around, make the other, you, you loosen the thread on the opposite side that you put it on. Cross wraps will hold this if I come front and back over the hook shank like this. And then I'm going to reverse that and come from the back to the front on my side of the hook shank. Then I'm going to come up and make a circle wrap right over top of the hook shank and around the bundle that the eyes are, are fastened down with the cross wraps. That really tightens that hook up. And I'm, I can show you here by turning this. And if you have, if you want to add some super glue to this, turn it upside down and put the glue on the thread wraps itself. Everywhere I'm pointing at it with the scissors. Okay. Now I'm going to add a, a, a belly of, of the deer hair. So I'm going to come forward of the eyes. In a spiral wrap. Then I'm going to spiral this thread back tight against the eye, like that. <clears throat> I'm going to take some deer hair. This is the tail, white deer tail. And it's going to be a layer on the belly. And it's also going to be sparse. Okay, but I'm going to show you where to select the best hair from. And if you uh, look on the Clouser Fly Shop website, you can actually print the directions out with with the deer tail picture on showing where to take the best hair out of the tail for the clouser minnow. If you cut too far down on the butt, it's going to flare when you tie it fast to the hook shank. So you want to cut this section in here, the center section or the top two thirds section of the deer tail is where you get your hair from the for the clouser. And make, keep it sparse. I don't know how many of you guys ever heard of, heard of how to keep a deer hair sparse bundle, but I want to show you something here. I've cut this bundle off, okay? The first thing we're going to do, just, just remove a couple oddball hairs, a couple long ones. Now take, and, take your, your left hand and run it back to almost the tips about three quarters of that length. Take your right hand and you squeeze this and pull the oddball short strands out. Okay, you do that once and, and twice and maybe three times and you get them out. Now what you have left is the old hairs, the adult hairs that are pretty even and the center piece is the longest part of that bundle. And, and we're going to put the belly on here, which is which is which you'll need to understand how I get the length of things. If you look at this and I hold this right here, this is one full length of the hook. This is two and a little bits of that quarter. So two and a quarter lengths of that hook shank is plenty good for that size uh, two hook. I'm going to squeeze this. Now, this is 
this has to be done or you're going to end up getting a paintbrush. Squeeze this bundle hard and cut it off and you have an oval. Can you guys see the oval? Is it much of the deer hair? Then I'm going to take and lay this on top of the hook shank. I'm going to, I'll cut this out, pull this out a little further so you can see it. The bottom cut of the bundle, can you see that? I'm going to tilt it downward. Right, right tight up against them eyes and I'm going to make a a circle or what we call a setting wrap lightly around that bundle and I'm going to lift straight up and then I'm going to wrap forward. That that's, ties that top belly in. Now watch here, I'm going to pull this back and I'm not going to pull down on that deer hair until I want to lift up on the back end. I'm going to come around and under the eyes, make one loose turn, come above it and pull straight up by holding this straight back. Now I'm going to wrap it spiral towards the rear of the hook by holding the bundle upward. Now I'm going to just spiral that forward. And there's what you have in your belly. I squeeze it a little bit there so it's more wide than it is round. Now if you look, I'm going to come forward here again. If you look on the bare shank of the hook underneath, can you see the bare shank where there's no deer hair around it? Okay. Now I'm going to turn this upside down and put flash in the middle. I like flash in the middle. I'm going to catch these couple of loose ends here to wind them down. I'm going to move my tying thread forward to the rear of the eye of the hook. I'm going to take, uh, this is uh, crystal flash here, guys. And it's, it's variegated or rainbow or something like that, the name for it. Uh, I'm going to cut off, I can't tell you how, I'm going to ever count these strands. But let's, let's cut off a goodly bunch. Okay. Pull this together. And we're going to wrap this around the tying thread. I'll pull it out here. Take her down. I lost my fold. Pull it tight to the thread like that. And I'm going to hold it straight above and pull the bobbin straight away from the eye of the hook so it pulls down onto the top of the hook shank. I don't want this stuff all over that that hook shank because it it tangles too easy. I'm going to wrap back over the fold. I know you're going to do this too. I lost it. <laughs> okay. I got. We'll go. We'll go to Berlin. Okay. Now, pull straight up on your flash. Wrap that back to about the halfway point. If you got any pieces sticking out, cut it off. And what that's going to do is going to lay over top of the white deer tail. And when you cut it, and this is usually uh, the same length, I don't have to cut much of it. Uh, it's probably a half of that hook length past the white ends of the deer tail fibers. Right there's the end of the flash. Okay, now we're going to take the chartreuse for the back. Same thing, I'm going to take that out of the center, center part of the tail. And a, a bunch that, if you're counting deer hairs or trying to understand how much I put on the back, I like to stick about a bundle and a half of the amount that's on the, the bottom. This will be, that'll be for the top. 
it's going to be a little thicker. I'm going to prepare it. I'm going to pull the fibers out of the middle. See them coming out? Now we're going to come up here and check the length. Now to me, that looks pretty good. I'm going to squeeze this into a bundle. Cut it off. And then I'm going to lay it on. Get them a couple of strands up on there. I spit on that stuff too. We're going to take this bundle. I want to make sure she's good and flat. And I'm going to lay it on top of the crystal flash. I'm going to come around, loose wrap, pull up, loose wrap, pull up, and just wrap this thing one turn in front of the other thread to get the head done. Shape the head. Should be a decent taper. And then I'm going to whip finish this head off. Up and down the head just a little bit. And that's usually all it's to this fly. Now, all you do is just do this and shape it. And what happens here when this thing gets wet in the water and you pull it through the water, the rear hairs go like this, compress. That's why that's, and the tying procedure I did with this head and the whole fly is called high tying. My tying is this one layer in front of the last one you put on. We'll, we'll make them spray up. Now I got something here to finish this head. <clears throat> How many of you guys have heard of this? Solar is. Okay. I use that to finish all the clouds or heads. I hold it up here and show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to first go down the side of this. Can you still see it? It's pretty good. There's the one side done. Then I'm going to turn this over do the other side. Over top of the eye. And down the middle. Try to hold it in my scissors without cutting the thread. Hang on. Okay, guys, there's your fly. How's that? So if you look at the minnow and that high tying method, you can see how broad that that light hair is, and then how narrow it is, too. Yes. It's got a fine, uh, thin profile. Yes, you bet. And that makes it dive quicker, too. And and the f diving in front of the fish, they won't lose sight of it. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, is there such a thing as too much flash, Bob? 
No, not 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 where, not where I've been fishing. Uh, I had a guy tell me one time that he only sticks one strand in. I just said, "What's the matter? Can't you afford it?" Uh, there's a lot of, uh, I guess I can call it theories, uh, excuses why you can't catch any fish. Uh, but it's, but it's really, uh, I don't think any fish that I know of can count them strands. And in off colored water, the more flash, the quicker they're going to see the flash. Help the fly a lot if you let the flash, maybe a half an inch of it, stick out the back end of the deer hair. It actually attracts the, the more fish better. I got a okay. question. Uh, I, was, I was wondering, do you, when the fish are biting the tail only and not getting hooked, do you ever think of using a longer shank or having a stinger behind it? I never had that problem. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, uh, if you use, are using long shank hooks, nine times out of 10, the bass cannot get that in their mouth or the fish are fishing. Take the fly, you're going to set the hook and hook him on the outside of the lip somewhere with a long shank hook. The shorter or regular length hooks are much, much better as far as hooking quality than what long shanks are. If a long, long shank will get stuck on the outside of its mouth, and when you take all the slack out of the line, you're going to pull the fly off its mouth from the outside.